Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Dr. Lulu Shimmick, and we're going to get started today on our webinar. And I'm going to be talking all about the thyroid and hormone health. I'm super excited. This is one of my favorite topics to share. And if you have any questions during the webinar, if you could hold them to the end, and I'll answer all the questions at the end. And there's a little box that says Q&A. And you can put uh, your questions right in there, and I'll be able to see them at the end. That would be great. Okay, let's get started. Let's see, make sure I have everything so you guys can see well. Okay, wonderful. So again, welcome. I'm Dr. Lulu Shimmick. I'm a naturopathic physician, functional medicine practitioner, author, botanical formulator, and podcast host of The Genetic Genius. I own my own clinic called Dr. Lou's Naturopathic Clinic. I'm based here in Asheville, North Carolina. It's a beautiful but cool spring day here, but I'm loving the weather. I also am the botanical director at the Veterans Healing Farm in Hendersonville, North Carolina, where I teach the veterans how to learn how to use plants in their daily life. And I also see patients out at the farm, the veterans at the community clinic there as well. I specialize in helping women regain hormonal balance and vitality by discovering the root cause of dysfunction. So that's really my purpose and passion is to really dive deep into what's going in the body and to learn where the dysfunction is. So what are we going to be talking about today? Today we'll be talking about how the thyroid gland affects our energy weight and hormone balance. So grab a notebook and a pen for taking notes and we'll dive in. After the webinar is over and tomorrow or this weekend, depending on how tomorrow rolls out, but I will send everyone a recap of the webinar. So you'll receive the slideshow with me speaking, and then also you'll receive a little handout that goes along with it. So you'll have the notes from there. There are a few notes or slides that aren't in that handout. They're ones I added in, So, but you'll have them in the audio section so you can go back and watch the replay. Okay, so first of all, women are at a greater risk for having thyroid disorders and in hormonal imbalance, and I'm going to talk about why. So did you know that thyroid disease affects one in every eight women through their lifetime? Such a huge amount. That's like, you know, one in every eight people you know has a thyroid condition. And women have a five to eight times greater risk of developing thyroid problems compared to men. So that's huge. So Hashimoto's thyroiditis, an autoimmune disease in which the immune cells attack the thyroid, is the most common type of thyroid disease. And that's what I see most with patients as Hashimoto's. And that's the autoimmune condition. Now, hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism are the other two most common conditions that I see. It's estimated that millions of women suffer from thyroid disease symptoms, but the key here is without ever being diagnosed. So it's a, it can be a little bit challenging to diagnose sometimes, and we're going to talk about why. So a lot of women are searching for short-term treatments for their symptoms without knowing the root cause, right? So they're just trying to fish for things that will help them feel better, but it's really the thyroid that's out of balance. And what's worse, thanks to toxins in our environment and other factors, the age of affected women with thyroid conditions is getting younger and younger. So first of all, let's look at the thyroid. So up at the top here is this butterfly shape. That's the thyroid gland. And above that, which is not in this picture, is the um, anterior pituitary gland. The anterior pituitary gland releases TSH, or thyroid stimulating hormone. That was what tells the thyroid what to do. And the, thi the thyroid releases T4. And you can see that underneath the thyroid there. Reverse T3 and, and then T3. So those go back and tell the anterior pituitary gland what to do. It's a feedback loop system, which makes the thyroid system a little bit more complicated, I would say. So factors that contribute to proper production of thyroid hormone, which is the T4, the reverse T3, and the T3. You can see that over in the right section over here. Those are specific nutrients, and I'm going to be talking about those. Iron and iodine, tyrosine zinc, selenium, vitamin E, and the B vitamins, and C and D. 
Now factors that increase conversion of T4 to T3, so that's selenium and zinc. So you can see, because if we're wanting to convert that more, and that's, and I'll talk a little bit more about that um, in the thyroid workshop. And factors that improve cellular sensitivity to thyroid hormones are vitamin A, exercise, and zinc. And then over on the left, you'll see that's, this is all in red. These are ones that inhibit the, the function of the thyroid functioning properly. So stress, infection, trauma, radiation and medications, fluoride, that's so fluoride in our water, which is an antagonist, antagonist to iodine, which is so important for the thyroid glands function. Toxins, so pesticides, mercury, cadmium, and lead. Autoimmune disease, so celiac is highly correlated to Hashimoto's and other uh, thyroid diseases. Factors that increase conversion of T4 to T3 or T4 to reverse T3 are stress and trauma, a low caloric diet, inflammation, releasing cytokines, which is um, actually really tied to what's happening with COVID right now, toxins, infections, liver and kidney dysfunction, and certain medications. So basically, this, si this slide I wanted to show you is that there's a lot of different factors that affect how the thyroid works and how it functions and can change the amount of specific hormone, not only affecting how the thyroid is working, where it's telling it to produce more or less, but also how the thyroid is telling the other hormones to be released. So a complicated yet important system. So environmental domains, these are all the aspects in our outside environment that affect the thyroid. And also we can think of these from the epigenetic factor that all these in our outside environment are help are changing the way that our genes work in epigenetics. And there's also specific factors, which I'm not going to go into in this lecture, but there's specific genes that affect the thyroid gland. So we have infections and antigens in the gut, toxins stress, movement, relationships, sleep, and nutrition, all these affect the thyroid gland. So how do we know if our thyroid is out of balance, right? Symptoms of thyroid imbalance. This is really key because there are so many different things. And let's take a look. <laughs> wow, right? Okay, so this is a lot of different things, which is one of the reasons why thyroid um, disease or thyroid imbalance is can be challenging to diagnose because you can see, okay, let's look at, there's um, fatigue and depression and irritability. Well, that could be a lot of different things, especially when it comes to women. That could be during cycling or having a regular hormone. Let's, there could be comprehension and brain fog and digestive issues and body pain and constipation. So there's a lot of different things on this slide. And I, when you'll have time to go back and look at a little bit more in detail, it's also in your notes as well. But I just want you to think about this and wow, you know, is my thyroid out of balance? Go through and check and I'll send out next week, I'll send out a quiz for you to take to see if your thyroid is imbalanced or not. And this will help you kind of figure out this a little bit more in detail. Okay, so how thyroid problems affect women? This is really key because what is the thyroid doing that's changing the way our body works? So it, the thyroid affects nearly every cell in our body. So this is really important. I want this to kind of you guys to hone in on this because this is really, really key. The thyroid affects multiple organs and pathways in the body. So not only does it work with metabolism, energy, hormones, we're going to see some of the other things it works with as well. So thyroid disease has a huge effect on energy levels. And as a result, your libido is affected as well. And when you're running on low energy levels, so whether you're in that, maybe you're in a place of adrenal fatigue, you won't be in the mood for much, right? So that really changes how your libido runs. And thyroid hormones affect the pathways of other hormones. So thyroid disease can create other hormonal imbalances, which is really key. So we'll see when the thyroid is out, out of balance, it can throw off or throw out of whack all the other hormones in the system, which causes a lot of other um, diseases and imbalances. So autoimmunity, autoimmunity is really a key part of how the thyroid functions. Now there's two aspects that are really directly correlated to thyroid disease and that those are Hashimoto's and Graves. So there's an increased risk that your immune cells 
will begin to attack other tissues in your body, and you may develop other autoimmune diseases. So it's, there's um, been lots of studies done that correlate thyroid conditions, such especially Hashimoto's, with other chronic autoimmune diseases like celiac. And so it's really important, one, to decipher or discern whether or not you have um, a thyroid condition. And then also if it's an autoimmune thyroid condition, because you want to look and make sure there's not any other thyroid conditions going on, or I should say any other autoimmune diseases going on. So living with thyroid disease can significantly impact a woman's self-confidence, energy levels, work performance, and even relationships. And that's because the, the once those immune cells are attacking yourself, a lot of other damage then becomes the downstream effect. So weight. Many women suffering from thyroid condition often struggle with weight gain and fatigue without getting any lasting improvements, which can take a toll on your mental health, right? It's like you're struggling to try to have energy, struggling to try to even get like five pounds off. And the thyroid controls our, our metabolism, but then when it's controlling the other hormonal, other hormones, especially the adrenal gland, you can have a lot of, of aspects that are triggering the body to hold onto weight and especially toxins in the system. So therefore getting diagnosed and starting treatment can really totally, completely change your life. So should you get tested? Let's talk about that because this is a really important category. And I really want to emphasize here, like test, don't guess when it comes to your thyroid. If you suspect that you have a thyroid condition, it's really important to get tested. If you have, if we go back to that other slide I was showing here, if you would, if you have a lot of these symptoms that are coming up, and I would say some of these common ones are fatigue, inability to lose weight, dry skin, hair, loss of appetite, memory loss and brain fog, body pain, constipation, having or sleeping a lot, or also having insomnia missing the outer third of the eyebrows, those are all very common. And so if you're seeing those, it's really important to get tested. So let's go back here. So if you've been experiencing several of those symptoms that I just shown, it's really worthwhile to get tested. However, the problem with hypothyroidism, so that's HPO, hypo, so there's hypo and hyper, is that its symptoms are broad and overlap with many other conditions. That's why it can be a little bit challenging to diagnose. So you must get tested and have definite results before you start any thyroid medication. So taking thyroid medication without a thyroid problem could be as harmful as not taking it if you do. Now, that being said, there are nutraceuticals you can bring on as well as herbs and essential oils that can really help support the thyroid and adrenal glands without taking a pharmaceutical. So why are so many women getting thyroid disease, right? I think that's a really key question. And one of the things I'm, that I want you to think about is, you know, the thyroid is our seat of communication. And as women, we've been a lot, for a long period of time, we've been really taught to not communicate, right? Or not to say our true feelings. And I think this is one of the things that really stems about from thyroid issues and thyroid dysfunction. And then toxins, toxins are really, really key. So without even realizing it, we are exposed to thousands of toxins every single day, which is a huge amount. They're hidden in our, in everything, right? They're hidden in our cleaning products, our fragrances, our foods, everything that we eat, not everything if we're eating organic. Well, there are still heavy metals in organic foods because they're not tested, but not as much. Of course, there are also obvious ones such as air pollution. You know, you might live in a larger city where there's a lot of air pollution and they're exposed to more toxins in the air and in the cars around you. These toxins can interfere with thyroid hormone production at various levels. So some toxins affect the liver and therefore impact the liver's ability to metabolize thyroid hormones. Really, really key. It, the liver then becomes stagnant and is not, be a, not able to make 
the thyroid hormones that in the body needs because it's having to use so much of its energy to process and detox because that's one of the main functions of our liver. We have phase one and phase two detoxification. So it's really key and really important for our liver to be able to focus on what it's supposed to be doing. And others directly affect the thyroid gland or its hormones. So by encountering so many of these toxins daily, our bodies have a hard time detoxifying them fast enough, right? They're having to work overtime. So over and over time, these damaging effects add up and can have serious impacts on our health and our thyroid hormones. So really a really easy thing to do is just try to switch out some of your cleaning products for clean, toxin-free alternatives over time. So you don't, you're not gonna have the ability to maybe change everything overnight, but start, you know, with, looking under the cabinet is really key first and looking through and seeing which ones are toxic and switching those out. Eating organic as much as you can. I really emphasize that. And, you know, spending, if you're only gonna spend a couple more dollars, when you're going to the grocery store, it's really important over time. It's prevention, preventing health and preventing illness moving forward. And also replacing toxic fragrances. So switch, switching to natural essential oils and removing any synthetic fragrances is really key. And cosmetics. So as women, we use a lot of cosmetics and skincare products, making sure you're using healthy cosmetics and healthy skin products. So here's a picture of the thyroid. So I wanted to talk about the factors. I mentioned a little bit of this earlier, factors that inhibit proper production of thyroid hormones. So let's go into this a little bit more detail. So stress, stress is a huge component of the thyroid function. And this is really key right now as we're you know, in more of a chronic stress situation with the pandemic, we're seeing much more stress, much more higher levels of stress, much more le higher levels of anxiety. And this affects how the thyroid functions so it's really key to have your thyroid tested to make sure that you're not having any thyroid problems start and to address it right away. So infection, if you are um, under a high amount of infection or have had an infection in the past, even if, if you've had COVID, you know, this can affect how the thyroid functions, trauma, and even a pregnancy. If you have a real traumatic birth or labor, this can really affect the thyroid radiation, so if you've had exposure to radiation and medication, specific ones, excess fluoride, which I mentioned in the water, that can really play a big key on how um, your thyroid's functioning. And toxins, so all pesticides, mercury, lead, cadmium, all these toxins in our environment then inhibit the way T4, reverse T3, and T3 are being released from the thyroid and then tell the body what to do. So autoimmune diseases, like I mentioned, and then goitrogen. So those are like tumors on the thyroid. So let's talk about nutrient insufficiencies. So the thyroid gland needs very specific nutrients to run and function properly. So nutrient deficiencies regularly go undiagnosed because they have severe and specific symptoms, right? So that's if you had an extreme deficiency. However, Many of us have vitamin and or mineral insufficiencies, right? So we're not, we don't have, a, we have an insufficient amount to allow the organ to function properly, which means we aren't getting enough adequate dosages to be healthy, but we still have enough to avoid any like serious problems like vitamin C and scurvy. Like we don't really have that anymore. That was more when the pirates were around. So some of the common ones that we see with thyroid dysfunction are iron, Vitamin D, we're seeing a huge rise on vitamin D insufficiency. Iodine, which I mentioned, which is an important component of thyroid function, and zinc and selenium. All of those are very important micronutrients for thyroid health. And many women have insufficiencies in at least one. But when I do testing, I'll see several of them come on board. So factors that contribute to proper production of thyroid hormone. So these are the key nutrients that tell the thyroid to make T4, reverse T3, and T3. So again, it's the iron and the iodine, tyrosine, zinc, selenium, also vitamin E, a powerful antioxidant. Our B vitamins, B2, B3, and B6, vitamin C, another powerful antioxidant and for the immune system, and then vitamin D. 
So these are really the key nutrients to consider in thyroid regulation. And if you're taking, let's say if you're taking a, a multivitamin um, and you're not taking these specifically, these are good to see if they're in your multivitamin. I usually don't recommend a multivitamin um, unless it's more in your budget because we can target specifics but sometimes it's easier than to get a really great multivitamin if, if you're needing lots of different micronutrients to help with the system. So stress, I mentioned stress a little earlier here and we're constantly stressed. Some of us are, even, are in an acute stressful situation. Some of us are in chronic stress and the pandemic we're really seeing that it's been in a chronic state of stress. And the thyroid gland, as I mentioned, is super affected by stress levels. So many of us are feeling over, overly stressed, like way too often, right? And our body is not, is like adapting quote unquote, but not really. So this chronic stress is causing us way more damage than to just our thyroid, but it could be a cause of the thyroid disease. So it's affecting many organ systems, but then the thyroid is, is having, is suffering as well. So when we feel stressed, the adrenal glands release cortisol, that's our stress hormone. And in large amounts of chronic stress, they releases large amounts of cortisol to compensate. And when the cortisol is continually released, it inhibits the production of thyroid hormones. And then we get hypothyroidism. So by finding ways to de-stress, such as exercise, meditation, or practicing self-care, you may significantly improve your thyroid health, and we'll see a dramatic improvement in your overall well-being as well. So it's really important to bring on some of these de-stressing techniques, and I go into them more in detail in some of my other workshops, but these are really key in helping your body de-stress and helping the thyroid function. So really start prioritizing yourself, making yourself number one, and treat your downtime with as much as importance as a work meeting or as a commit within, commit with, commitment with your friend, right? You owe it to yourself to make yourself number one. So stress uh, suppresses specific aspects of the thyroid function. So it suppresses the way the hypothalamus releases TRH, that's thyroid releasing hormone. So that's the gland that tells the anterior pituitary what to, to do. So then stress, suppresses the anterior pituitary release of thyroid stimulating hormone. It also suppresses production of thyroid hormones from the gland itself. So you can see that stress affects every aspect of the HPA axis. So that's the hypothalamus, the adrenal and the, the adrenal gland and the um, pituitary axis. So those three things are highly affected. And it's really key to manage your stress. So medications that affect the thyroid system. So many medications affect thyroid function because they block conversion of T4 to T3. And you remember from that image earlier, that's what's coming out of the thyroid gland. And then telling it going back and telling the anterior, anterior pituitary gland, hey, I was functioning well. No, I wasn't. I didn't, I don't have a lot to tell you what to do. So these specific medications, beta blockers, those are used in cardiovascular disease, birth control pills, estrogen replacement. So that's bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, proton pump inhibitors. Those are used for gastric conditions like GERD. Lithium that's used in mood disorders, uh, phenotoin, phenophylline, and chemotherapy. And chemotherapy is very particular. So if you've had um, some chemotherapy in the past with cancer, um, it's really particular to have your thyroid inspected or tested to see if it's functioning properly. So digestive issues, you know, this is an area that a lot of people don't think about that's connected to the thyroid gland, but your digestive system is filled with bacteria, proteins, and broken down nutrients. This is like kind of what's inside the soup, right? <laughs> Digestive issues such as leaky gut syndrome can create a, like a mess out of the immune system because the proteins will leak out of gap junctions. So the gap, so we have our colon and within the colon, we have cells, which are like, you know, you can think of like a, an open container and those cells are connected by a junction called a gap junction. When the body is under stress, especially adrenal stress and thyroid stress, 
those gap junctions become loose and open up. And then proteins start to leak out into the bloodstream from the colon, which causes inflammation and all kinds of downstream effects and leads to an autoimmune response because there's these particles in the blood that the body's then having to have to fight off. And that can be a key factor of Hashimoto's disease, again, which was that autoimmune condition of the thyroid. And imbalance of the gut microbiota, so that's all of the gut the flora, all of our uh, good bacteria in the gut, when it becomes imbalanced and has an overpopulation of bad bacteria known as dysbiosis, it can trigger the autoimmune response and trigger thyroid conditions. So if there's not enough healthy bacteria to out colonize the bad bacteria or invasive pathogens, right? So we'll have a gut dysbiosis happening, which causes a trigger in the thyroid. So either of these conditions can trigger the gut-associated lymphoid tissue. So that's nicknamed GALT. That is the immune system of our gut. So it's, that's a huge component of how we function. So the, those then trigger the GALT. And they can be, this can be caused by food intolerances, very common, like not just celiac, but other conditions such as gluten intolerance or dairy intolerance or other intolerances to specific foods like corn or sugar processed or artificial foods or infections or taking too many antibiotics, all of those things can cause dysbiosis in the gut. So hormone imbalance, this is a key aspect of how the thyroid functions. So many products that we use in our everyday life contain synthetic estrogen-like chemicals known as xenoestrogens. And these chemicals are found in cosmetics, fragrances, and even plastic containers. So myself, last year in 2020, I, you know, I had a little bit more time on my hand at home. And so one of my goals was to go plastic-free. And whew, it was really challenging. I'm still doing a lot of it. It's not my 100% focus this year, but I've replaced so many of my plastic products. And I'm really conscious about everything that comes in a plastic container. And I feel guilty for buying the plastic. And so I really try to re reuse it in a specific way or not buy it at all. And these chemicals are found in cosmetics, fragrances, and the plastic containers, like I said. So xenoestrogens are pro-inflammatory. They increase inflammation in the body, and they play a role in the development of autoimmune diseases by affecting the immune cells. So you're, you are getting these toxins from things that you're putting on your skin or eating or buying at the store that are then causing your body to go into an inflammatory state and causing autoimmune diseases and thyroid dysfunction. And they affect the immune cells specifically. So even natural estrogen, so that can be, even if you're taking a, a human, Bioidentical hormone replacement therapy can trigger autoimmune diseases in some women who have more of the pro-inflammatory estrogen type. So lifestyle tips for thyroid health. So these are just a few things that you can start to do if you're feeling like you're out of balance, your thyroid might be out of balance. So moderate exercise is really key, not doing heavy, heavy duty cardio, but doing moderate exercise every day, like 30 minutes a day is a real great goal. When studies are shown, showing now that even doing, instead of doing one big lump of exercise during the day, but spreading it out is having much more uh, benefit, especially with all the sitting that we're doing. And too much intense exercise can compromise function of the thyroid gland, making weight loss very difficult. So make sure if you're having some um, difficulty losing weight right now, make sure you pay attention to that because you want to have lower intensity cardio or lower intensity exercise. So stress relief, like I talked about before, is really key. And then adequate sleep recovery. So you need at least eight hours a night to really recover. So foods to consider to improve cellular sensitivity of, uh, in thyroid imbalance. So one, pre and probiotics. So prebiotics are, our root vegetables are a great source. You could also take it as a supplement. Probiotics are taken and they help to colonize. So prebiotics feed the bacteria. So in that pre-state. And probiotics are in the gut and we're making, or uh, basically giving the gut more of that flora, like lactobacillus. And they address dysbiosis, which I mentioned earlier. 
So number two, foods that are high in phytonutrient content. So really dense phytonutrient foods address inflammation. Number three, foods low in omega-6 and omega-3 ratio. So those are pro-inflammatory foods. And so ones that do not are not inflammatory. Let's let me say that a little bit clearer. So foods that are not inflammatory, right? And then number four, foods that are low in saturated and trans fatty acids. So the, when you're looking at your diet and nutrition, having these four things come into play can be really key. So I wanted to let you, so that's the end of our discussion for today. And I hope you learned a lot about different aspects that can really affect the thyroid and how it functions. So I have a great workshop coming up on Wednesday, May 12th at 5 p.m. This is gonna really dive deeper into how your thyroid functions. And you're gonna learn more about why women have increased risk for thyroid disorders, how reproductive hormones, gut health and toxins affect your thyroid health, six potential triggers or, triggers or stressors that affect your thyroid um, health. And then you're gonna learn all about laboratory assessments. So I'm gonna give my recommendations about which labs to have tested because most of the time people will just have you there. Thyroid stimulating hormone tested. And this really is only testing one aspect of the thyroid you can see on the top line here. Those are all the aspects and you saw in those images that I showed how the thyroid is functioning. If we don't test those other numbers, we're really not giving justice to our thyroid. And then I'll go over all these other tests as well that are really important for testing thyroid function. I'm also gonna be talking about herbs and essential oils for thyroid health, like ashwagandha, bladder whack, coleus, and then essential oils like lemongrass, frankincense, lavender, and much, and much more. I'll be help, really helping you to dive deep into solutions for thyroid health and a real introduction to how you can take charge of your thyroid and balance. So thank you so much for taking the time today. I really hope you learn about how to take your thyroid health to the next level and to really start to check yourself and see if you're having some aspects of your thyroid that might be out of balance and really get tested or seek out some testing. So again, you can sign up for my health workshop, thyroid health workshop on May 12th. That's a great one. It's gonna be more intensive than this and it will just go dive into detail. And then also you can book an appointment with me if you're needing help from a physician like myself that really is a thyroid expert. And everyone that attended today, you'll get 50%, 50%, 50% off your first consult. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram. This is a great way to learn about my health tips, recipes, and free webinars. And then I'm going to be having some upcoming programs. So my 30-day thyroid recovery hormonal health program and the gut restoration. So if those are something that you're interested in, keep an eye out there. So thank you so much for attending.